Tonight, an unexpected boost thanks to a Virginia law first met with pushback. So back in 2020, lawmakers passed a measure that made living shorelines the default method for erosion control. As Philip Townsend shows us, its benefits go beyond land preservation. There was skepticism from some back in 2020. That was after a recommendation from the Virginia Marine Resources Commission. Lawmakers updating the decades-old Bay Act to make living shorelines the default method for fighting erosion. That meant no more backyard bulkheads and options that many consider better looking by traditional standards. A living shoreline looks like this. Plants, vegetation, things that filter bad stuff out of the water. Just a marsh that goes directly out and it should gradually just kind of fade into the water. Hard shorelines look like this. Concrete walls, heavy bulkheads, and a misconception that they're helping combat sea level rise. Well, since that measure was passed more than four years ago, we're now seeing a new benefit to living shorelines that goes beyond just land preservation. According to a team of researchers from the Virginia Institute of Marine Science, living shorelines boost the state's recreational fishing industry three times more than hardened shorelines. And there's a simple reason why. Predator fish like trout, rockfish, and flounder all go where the bait is. And those living shorelines are the perfect home for crabs, grass shrimp, and other species at the bottom of the food chain. The more bait, the more fish. And those changes to the guidelines since 2020 are now producing more than $6.4 million every year in economic value from recreational anglers, according to the VIM study. For 13 News Now, I'm Philip Townsend. Very interesting. The study by the Virginia Institute of Marine Science is the first to assign an economic value to the benefit of living shorelines.